Ladies and gentlemen, the reason you are seeing smoke coming out my ears is simply because for the past two weeks I have been programming, programming, programming. But why have I been programming? Let's go back a few weeks and find out. Several weeks ago, I was sitting on my computer killing time in one of the very few Facebook groups that I follow because it reminds me of my childhood, MS-DOS Gaming. While I was dawdling, I read a comment saying Nobody does MS-DOS games anymore except for the 8-bit guy. I was familiar with the 8-bit guy. I have watched many videos of him restoring old computers, but I was not aware that he is building a game. Anyway, the comment triggered one of those switches in my brain and placed me in a self-challenging situation where I questioned myself if I could do a similar project. Don't ever ask yourself such questions because the answers are incredibly time-consuming. It took me two weeks and a huge brain cell loss in order to find the answer which is Yes, I can do it. So the first thing I did was to look up which programming languages were used during the era of the DOS, which was approximately the 80s and the 90s. So the most popular languages that were dominating the computer world back then were Fortran, GW Basic, Basica, C, Pascal and Assembly. That woke up some memories of mine. I remember when I was a teenager, more like a 12 or 13 years old kid, I enjoyed experimenting with GW BASIC. So since I had some kind of experience with the BASIC language, I decided to try out my project with the latest version of BASIC, which was Quick BASIC or else QBASIC. And the project started. The first thing that I realized is that Quick Basic is a language with no designing environment where I could draw my graphics. Modern languages are fully compatible with graphic files like JPEG or BMP and all standard image files. But with Basic, you can't use the typical image files of our time because those image compression algorithms were written for Windows long after the era of the DOS. The JPEG compression was initially written in 1992. So at that point I thought, shit, I'm screwed. If I have to draw everything pixel by pixel using code lines in order for the graphics to appear on my screen, I'm in deep trouble. So I had to find some way to design the graphics of the game by, for example, using Photoshop instead of making everything pixel by pixel. And I found one pretty good solution. There is this guy called Graham Downey who wrote a script that can convert images to BSV files, which is the standard image file for BASIC. So I didn't have to design everything pixel by pixel any longer. I could do it in a graphical software like PaintShop Pro and then convert with the script into BSV. His script is an add-on for Paint.net, which seems to be a graphical design software that I was not aware of. But when I opened it, I realized why I was not aware of it. It's pretty amateurish. A bit better than MS Paint, but nothing you could do professional work with. In the meanwhile, I was thinking about the game plan, the story of my game. I was designing the idea in my head. So I decided to create an action fighting game similar to Street Fighter or Mortal Kombat which I used to play a lot as a kid. So the initial idea was to create 8 fighters 
But after I saw how much time consuming it was, I said to myself, okay, in the first version, you can just do four characters. And then I faced some problems with uh, lack of memory and I couldn't add too many fighters or graphics. You see, the thing with DOS-based programs is that you have one megabyte of accessible memory. The quick basic environment needs to fit in there as well as your code, arrays and all the graphics memory. And that is the reason the fourth character, Cliff Booth, cannot be selected. I had no time to create more modules, so I decided to keep the program below the limits. Anyway, the way that you can create your graphics instead of encoding them line by line or pixel by pixel is this. You can open a video file or even YouTube and freeze it in the frame that you want to capture. Press the print screen button on your keyboard and then paste the image which is saved in the case memory in a graphical software program. And from there on you can cut off the unnecessary area and keep only what you want to use as your graphics. Don't care so much about the details because the largest screen mode compatible with PSV conversional tool is screen 13 which is 320 by 200 pixels. So your graphics quality will be reduced when converting into PSV file. And when displayed it will be scratched, blurred and the details will go away. After you finish drawing your characters, your terrain or whatever your graphics will be, you can save them, open them with paint.net and save as BSV file, which is DOS readable. Now it's time to program the actual code. For that matter, you might need to read a few books or go to a university. YouTube is a fantastic tool which we all love and you can find tutorials on how to make an omelette or masturbate but you can't learn how to program. So, since I am the biggest genius ever laid food on planet Earth after Einstein, uh, I read a book about Quick Basic and I did it in two weeks. Quick Basic is not running on Windows, so you have to download a DOS emulator and probably the best one is DOSBox. After you download and install DOSBox, you need to set some automations, otherwise you have to do the same things every time you load DOSBox. Mount and skip to the drive where your program is located and then run quick basic are a few commands that will spare some of your time. And each time you open your DOS box it will start maximized and QBasic will be already running. Here are some helpful images that you should get before you start. The codes of the colors. and the codes of the keyboard buttons which you can also find in the help content of QBasic. So let's proceed now to the actual programming. Programmers are a kind of inhuman. It must look crazy 
in the average person's eyes, but in a programmer's eyes it looks like a piece of cake. It's his everyday view. Crazy motherfuckers. Now the most peculiar thing is this command here, which is supposed to come up with a random number. And I ask you, what is random? There is no such thing as random. Random is uh, nothing but a made-up word. It does not really exist in nature. Call me cynic, but I believe in a deterministic universe where all events are determined completely by previously existing causes. Every result is the reaction of some kind of initial action that triggered it. There is no such thing as random. So how does a computer come up with a random number? I don't know, but I can uh, guess a few ways to do that. One way is that the computer could, for example, get our current time. Let's say that uh, the moment of the computing, the time was 12 o'clock and 1 minute and 45 seconds. And then it puts those numbers in an equation and then makes some weird calculations and comes up with a random number. Now, it's time we ask of the computer to give us a random number because the seconds are different in the given time that we ask. The result of the equation is different. And so it gives us a new random number which we think that is random, but it isn't. Computers do only what we tell them to do. They can't come up with a random number. Humans can't come up with a random number either. When someone asks you to tell him a random number from 1 to 10 and you choose for example 3, there is a very reasonable explanation why you chose this number which is based on the processing data of your brain and the chain reaction of electromagnetic signals in your brain. Okay, so I will try to explain a few things. And let's see, sub i0, this is the artificial intelligence of the computer opponent. It gives us a random number from 1 to 31. And based on that random number, it acts. When the random number is 2, here we have a larger distance because the kicks could be applied on a larger distance, because it is a kick, it's not a punch. Our kick goes farther than our hand. And then uh, deduct 10 points because the kick is stronger. And then play a sound and some limiters and get the character back that took the kick. On some other random cases, the computer opponent just moves, like this one here, or like here if difficulty is 1, do nothing. But if difficulty is 2, which means if the game is set up on hard mode, then uh, block, do some blocking. In some other cases the characters just move, or hit, or punch. Here, for example, we have the sub of the main menu. Here we have the victory, what happens when you eliminate all your enemies. It clicks CLS, it clears the screen and color locate where the text will be on the screen. And then delay 10 is like a routine to hold down a little bit before proceeding on the next command. This is one of the latest thing I did is the melody. I converted the melody of my original song into basic mode. Those are notes. Okay, enough with the explanations. Let's run and see the actual game.
You can download the latest version of the game in the link in the description and you can also find the link to Spotify to stream the original version of Legends Never Die, which is a track that I wrote. So, a few conclusions about programming. I am certainly not going to be a programmer. This project burned a lot of my brain cells. During the days that I was programming, I was not able to think of anything else. The amount of energy that a person needs to consume in order to find solutions to the problems that come up during programming is enormous. And in combination with the many memory problems that I experienced with QBasic and the limitations, I would not consider making another program ever again. But it is a good exercise for your mind. So, my next project related to programming will be based on a language supported by Windows and will have a graphical design compatibility. So now I can go back on Facebook and comment that MS-DOS games are still in development, not only by the 8-bit guy. Thanks for watching.